It's good to start and end our meditation with thoughts of goodwill. At the start, as John Sawat once said, it's basically for us. We're trying to get the mind into concentration. Ill will is one of the hindrances that keeps us out of concentration. So we want to do a little heading off at the pass so that thoughts of ill will don't come up in the course of the meditation. Or if they do, you can remember the goodwill we've been spreading to ourselves and all beings. Helps put the mind in a good mood. We don't wish any ill to anybody. Now, as for other, whether people actually will be truly happy, that's going to depend on them. Thoughts of goodwill are not a prayer, and they're not a magic spell. As the Buddha once said, if prayer worked, there wouldn't be any poor or ugly or short-lived people in the world. And it's not that we're spreading goodwill to people because they deserve it or don't deserve it. The question of deserving doesn't come in. It's for our own sake, not only in terms of the concentration, but in terms of the practice of the precepts. We don't want to harm anyone, and so we have to consciously develop thoughts of goodwill, even to people who have harmed those who we love, who have helped people that we don't like. We can't let our likes or dislikes determine our actions, because it's very easy for them to lead to a lot of unskillful actions. This is one of the reasons why it's important to understand goodwill. It's not love when we say metta, because as the Buddha pointed out, love tends to create divisions. If you love somebody and un someone else does something nasty to them, it's very hard to love the other person. Or if there's someone you've seen doing a lot of evil and there are people helping that person, it's hard to feel goodwill for them. It's hard to love them. So love creates divisions. So that's something we don't want. We want an attitude that whoever, regardless, wherever, regardless, we're dealing with other people, we're dealing with ourselves, we want to have an attitude of goodwill, that that person be happy and that we be happy. What kind of happiness are we talking about here? Well, any kind of happiness that comes from skillful actions. The attitude of goodwill is called metta jittena, and the word citta in jittena can mean either heart or mind, and actually it means both. In the Buddhist teachings, they don't make a clear division between your thoughts and your emotions. You're trying to develop both, which means you want your thoughts to be motivated by goodwill, and you want your goodwill to have some understanding. And part of that is realizing that other people are actually going to be happy depending on their actions. That means you can wish goodwill for them, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be happy as a result. You want to be careful about your actions so that you don't actively cause suffering to others or harm to others. This is why goodwill is coupled with those other Brahma-viharas, compassion, empathetic joy, and equanimity. Compassion is what goodwill feels on seeing people who are suffering or who are causing or are doing the actions that would cause suffering. Notice that one of those phrases that we had in the chant just now. May no beings despise anybody. May no beings harm anybody. In other words, we don't want anybody to do things that will cause harm, because they're harming others right now, and they're also going to be harmed by their actions on into the future. So it's not just may beings be happy, but may they act on the causes of happiness and avoid the kinds of actions that would lead to unhappiness, that would lead to harm. Empathetic joy is what you feel when you see someone who is either happy already or who's doing things that will lead to happiness. You're glad for that person. The results may not be coming right away, but you know the results will come down the line. And then there's equanimity, realizing that there are a lot of things you can't change. Happiness depends on present actions, past actions. Past actions you can't change. Present actions, you have some control over your present actions, but there are a lot of people out there that you don't have any control over at all. As John Swat used to say, each of us has one person. 
We're responsible for our thoughts, our words, our deeds. We can have an impact on others, but we can't be responsible for them, for their actions. So we have to be very careful to keep watch over ours. This is one of the problems with most people, is they neglect what they're doing, don't pay attention to what they're doing, paying a lot of attention to what other people are doing, and want to straighten it out. But that doesn't work. So those are areas where you have to have some equanimity. That's what brings some wisdom into your goodwill. Because you're doing this for yourself, so you can be a reliable person. Whether people deserve it or not, that's not the issue. You need your own goodwill, both for your practice in precepts and your practice in meditation. For the meditation to go well, you've got to get the mind to settle down. And if you're thinking about how you might harm somebody or you're living with the results of having harmed somebody, it's very difficult to get the mind to be still. You start thinking about unskillful things you've done. I mean, there are unskillful things that you meant where you meant well, but you didn't know the full story. That doesn't leave a scar on the mind the same way as when you knew you were causing harm. That leaves a scar that lasts for a long time. So to avoid that kind of scar, you want to be able to develop goodwill in all areas. When you realize that you have acted in an unskillful way, the best realization is that the best thing you can do for the world is not to wallow in remorse, but to notice, okay, that was a mistake, and you resolve not to make that mistake again, and then spread thoughts of goodwill both to encourage yourself to, to realize, okay, you do have some good to you, and the goodwill helps protect you so that you will be more likely to act skillfully on into the future. So we have to understand goodwill, our wish for happiness for ourselves and for all others, within the context of karma. There are certain things we can do, certain things we can't. In the areas where we can make a difference, you want to make sure that the motivating factor is goodwill, a wish for happiness, and particularly the kind of happiness that comes from doing the practice, being virtuous, being generous, meditating. That way our goodwill keeps control on our actions, and through our actions it has an impact on other people. As for thoughts of goodwill at the end of the meditation, again, that's to remind yourself, one, that you're going to be leaving meditation now and you're going to be dealing with other people. So you want to make sure that goodwill is your motivating factor. And two, the fact that the mind has been concentrated gives more power to the goodwill. It actually becomes more tangible. You've got a sense of well-being inside, and it's good to reflect, okay, I don't want to harm that sense of well-being. And the unskillful thoughts that come out of your mind, those are the primary things that are going to harm the sense of well-being you've gained from the concentration. And when the mind is really concentrated, other people can pick it up. You've probably noticed you're in a group of people in a room and someone walks in and you can immediately pick up, okay, this person means well to others or doesn't mean well to others. Colors the atmosphere all around. That's just one of the ways in which you can see that an attitude of goodwill really does make a difference that other people can feel. And that way it does help their happiness, too. Whether they're conscious of it or not, that's another matter. And whether they respond in kind or not doesn't matter at all. We've got to think about what we're producing as we go into the world instead of what we're getting back from other people. If our goodness depends on their goodness, it's really shaky and unreliable. But if we're able to contemplate what it means for us to be happy, for other people to be happy, and what it means to wish for people to be happy, you realize you're wishing that people would change their ways if they're being unskillful. 
understand the causes of true happiness and learn how to act on them. Now, that's something you can wish for anybody, regardless of how horrible or despicable their actions have been in the past. The world would be a better place if everyone could find true happiness inside through generosity, virtue, meditation. And when you can think in this way, then you realize goodwill is something that doesn't require that you put on rose-colored glasses or send out pink clouds or cotton candy of nice thoughts. It's extremely practical. It's essential. It's what allows you to live in the world safely.